You know, lots of times here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series, some of our celebrity friends and guests enjoy their first visits with us, that they want to come back and spend some time with us and with all of you. And we have a very special guest who's doing that, a veteran, a legend in the television and film industry, the extraordinary and effervescent always. Charlotte Stewart is back with us. You know her from Little House in the Prairie, The Waltons, Eraserhead, Twin Peaks, and so much more. We'll talk about all that. She was a guest with us, i say about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. And if you want to go back and watch that episode, it is archived. We really went over her extraordinary career and all the high points and also talked about her memoir. We're going to dive into that as well. But also at the same time, it is, believe it or not, and this is amazing, we had Alison Arngrim, of course, from Little House in the Prairie on just a matter of weeks ago. It's the 50th anniversary Hard to believe of the beloved series, Little House on the Prairie. 50 years. Could you imagine that? It's even hard to say it. it's been that long. Beloved series on NBC, of course, with so many incredible actors and actresses and producers all involved in that series. And of course, uh, our beloved guest, Charlotte Stewart, was Miss Beadle on that series, which was really a fantastic role for her. And people remember her and love her for that role, but so much more, too. Again, she's been doing this for a long time. You've seen her on television. You've seen her in so many incredible films and a beloved actress. And she has penned an extraordinary memoir, as I mentioned, Little House and the Hollywood Hills. And she's very open and real and authentic about it as well. And again, uh, so many spectacular spectacular stories, so many veteran actors she's had an opportunity to work with and coincide with. And, you know, some of the favorite roles that she's played include, as I mentioned, Miss Beadle, but also Betty Briggs, Twin Peaks, another fantastic series. As I mentioned, she was in Eraserhead, which was amazing as well. She was on the Loretta Young Show, one of her first appearances. And of course, she married Tim Considine, who was, of course, on My Three Sons. And unfortunately, we just lost him about a year ago, and uh, she's shared those stories as well. She was in Speedway, the movie with Elvis, yeah, and a lot of other things. We'll talk about all this as we go along with our very special guest. She is right now in a beautiful part of our country. Now, I'm your host, Jim Masters. We're in the host chair getting ready to do the show for you, and it's a pleasure to have you here. We're in the New York area here in the Northeast. Uh, it's a beautiful area here in the Northeast along the coast. And we had a beautiful day today here in the United States. She's on the other side. She's on the West Coast, a little north, and beautiful Napa Valley. That's where she makes her home. And she's actually in her sewing room. I'm actually going to see the inside of her house in her sewing room, which is really terrific. But uh, she has sewn together a beautiful career, and she talks about it so openly, and she's an amazing person. And she's funny, and she's affable, and she's a treat to have back here on the Gym Masters Show Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series once again. The incomparable Charlotte Stewart is with us. Charlotte, welcome back to the show. Hey, Jim. <laughs> How are you? Fantastic. How are you? And I'm, you're taking I'm... us inside your... Napa Valley sewing room. How cool is that? We're we're in my sewing room, yeah, with all my bags. I'm making I'm making beetle bags today, you know, coming up with our 50th anniversary. And uh, oh yeah, gosh, there's so much to do. So much to do. There's so much to do. Tell us about the beetle bags for those who don't know what those are. They're very special. Well, I've sewn all my life. When I was a kid, I was a competitive roller skater. And if you roller skate, you have to have these little skating outfits. Well, I was raised in, on a farm in a small town. They didn't have any little skating outfits. So my sister taught me to sew. And so now I'm making what I call beetle bags. This is one right here. This is uh, with the logo of Little House on the Prairie on it. And they're just, you know, tote bags. But they're souvenir tote bags because... I can, I make them with all kind. oh, well, let me grab one here. I make an, um, this one, this one is with Laura and Mary on their very first day at school. And this is what I do when I'm home between, um, you know, trips across the country to meet the fans of Little House on the Prairie. 
you know, that's really terrific. Very creative to do that. I love that idea. And how can people get those? Well, um, gosh, you can, you can go online. Um, I don't have a website yet. So I just, if you write to Amazon, they will reach me and uh, you can right. tell me your favorite character and I can, you know, I can put uh, either Miss Beetle or Pa or wow. the Ingalls family or wow. Dean, you know, Almanzo. Dean. How cool Anybody it is like to know that you custom make those for the fans and those people who really appreciate the series and you and the cast. That's really a beautiful thing to, to have it done by I mean, Charlotte Stewart. I mean, how hey, you know, it keeps, it keeps me sane. Okay. It keeps you sane and balanced yes. and uh, <laughs> in a crazy, <laughs> crazy industry, as we all know, working in these industries. Oh my uh, God, Jim, I have never traveled so much as this year, it's so the 50th brilliant. anniversary. It's just amazing. I was saying it's very hard to even say those words that it's been 50 years of Little House on the Prairie. It's extraordinary, isn't it? And, and to know that there is such a continued loyal fan base for that beloved series, 50 years, just as strong, if not even stronger now. It's amazing. I, I have completely bowled over. I was just in Simi Valley, California, where we shot Little House on the Prairie. We had 22,000 people there. 22,000. I mean, we didn't even get a chance to meet everybody, but we no. tried very, very hard to, yeah. you know, keep people moving through and wow. give them a chance to tell us how much they thought of Little House on the Prairie. Or, yeah. You know, and it's it, traveling right. the, the country. I know they're going to other cities and other places too as yeah. they celebrate, which is incredible. I'm going to be in Springfield, Missouri in a week. The Apple Blossom come back Festival. From there, and then I'm going to go to Pepin. Wisconsin wow. and oh you know we just have so and many Hartford you know, Connecticut in August yeah. September yeah. yeah which is a couple of days I think too at their convention center yeah it's usually two or three days yeah, yeah it's that long I'm gonna try to but get we to have that such one a good time because you know we never get to see each other the yeah. cast because I, I live in Northern California in Napa everybody else lives either in Texas or in Southern California so the only time we, we, we change planes and we get to see each other or we land and we get to see each other. So I love it. I absolutely love it. You're having a good time. You really are in a sweet spot in your life. I know that yeah. from the last conversation we had and just following along your endeavors with the memoir and all these wonderful things. And you're in beautiful. I was on. A, I was mentioning we were talking off air, Charlotte and I, that I was just in Napa Valley about a year ago on a television project, television shoot, and what a. I just fell in love with it. What brought you to beautiful Napa Valley? Well, it's funny. I, when I retired from acting, I decided at the age of sixty-five, I couldn't remember my lines anymore, and that's very embarrassing if you're hired to do a job. So I called my agent and I said, you know what, I quit. I'm done and I'm going to go live a life. And then I had to figure out what I wanted to do. And my parents always wanted to retire to Napa. They just loved it. Unfortunately, they didn't make it because they, they both passed away too soon. So I said, you know what? I'm going to move to Napa. It's what they wanted to do. And so I'm going to do it. So I'm living here. I'm loving it. I help raise money sometimes for the local hospital because I'm a breast cancer survivor and they call on me to, you know, help them once in a while. In the main, meantime, I'm here on my sewing machine making bags for my trips around the country. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And again, you've landed in such a wonderful spot and I know you love it there. What's the weather like today? Today, it is about 76 uh, it's clear. I got a little cloud over me, but it's going to be fine for the rest of the week. That's yeah. nice. So it's a busy, you, you pretty much have the whole year planned out already with all these events and things happening, right, Charlie? Yeah, I've got, hang on, I'm going to grab it. My, <laughs> my calendar. It's the only way I know where I'm going. Um, <laughs> Cherry Blossom Festival next week. That's right. In, in Missouri, that's a fabulous thing. In Missouri, thing. Springfield, yeah. Missouri. Then I'm going to Pepin, Wisconsin. And then I'm going to Independence, Kansas. Uh, then in July, I'm going to Walnut Grove, Minnesota. And right after that, Keystone, South Dakota. 
And then um, Watertown, Connecticut, that's in August. Pennsylvania. Um, gosh. Um, oh, and then there's a Tremors reunion that I'm going to. And I don't know what I'm doing for the rest of the year. That's <laughs> just so far. You know what I think is so cool? That you're sitting there with an actual sewing machine and you're raffling off your dates of events on an actual physical calendar where you had to write the, it in. <laughs> I love that. I use that. I still use the paper I calendars and yeah, I don't use anything on the phone or anything else. I still like to have the physical thing in my hand and thumb through, right? Write it down, write, write it, it down. Right. And I've got another one in my purse that I carry because I'm out somewhere and somebody goes, well, where are you going in September? I go, hang on just a minute. Thumb, thumb, thumb. <laughs> 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 that is funny. <laughs> you know, for everybody that's uh, watching and listening, uh, how did that opportunity come your way to play that role of Miss Beetle? Well, I got an interview and, you know, I used to do a lot of Westerns. I did a lot of gun oh, smokes and yes, Bonanza did. and all of that. So I got this interview and I had never heard of Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I didn't know it was a book. I didn't know it was a big hit. It was. It was before the series, yeah. Yeah, all I know is that I was supposed to be a teacher. So I showed up. Now, this is 1974. That's right. 50 years ago. Hmm. And I showed up in my usual attire. I was a hippie at the time. So I, my jeans and my tie-dye T-shirt, I show up at Paramount, and the door opens, and it's Michael Landon. And I went, oh, my God, this is huge. I had no idea. So I walked in and they said, are you ready to read? And I yeah, to tell you, I don't know what I'm reading for. But I said to the producer who was sitting behind this great big desk, I said, excuse me, can I sit behind your desk? Well, everybody started going, oh, blah, blah. and I went quiet. I got the part. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took. Quiet. And I was it. Wow. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, boy. What was it like working with everybody? Of course, Michael Landon, you know, he was a genius in what he did and these caring, tender stories. And, of course, Highway to Heaven was another beloved series as well. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with everybody and on set and, and just putting these shows together that, again, are still loved all these years later? I know. Michael had the magic touch. I I can't believe, that, I mean, I, I was so shocked that it was a Michael Landon show because then I, I knew it was huge. Um, it was wonderful. He He's a family man. You know, he wants to go home and have dinner with his family. And he figures that his crew wants the same thing and the actors too. So he would shoot so that we got to go home at six o'clock. Now, that is not normal for Hollywood series. You work until midnight, you come in at six in the morning, you know, it just until you get it done is all they care. No, Michael wanted us to go home and be with family. So he, you know, he shot what he needed to edit together. And that was it. He didn't overshoot. So it was really fun to be. And, and we got to be with the kids all the time. You know, they were on the set, all the little kids, Laura, Mary, Almanzo. You know, it was just, it was, it was a blessing, a real blessing. Now, did you stay in touch? You mentioned a little of that. Did you stay in touch with everybody throughout the years or is this reunion sort of bringing everybody back together? Well, we actually have been doing this for quite a while. Yeah. It, you know, every year we go to a, a couple of little places, but there's nothing like the 50th anniversary of Little House on the Prairie, especially in the beginning when everybody went, Little House on the Prairie? Ha, huh, that'll never go. Right. Well, huh. <laughs> exactly right. How did you like taking on that role of Miss Beetle? And, and how much of Charlotte is Miss Beetle? And how much of Miss Beetle is Charlotte? Well, I absolutely loved it. But I never had children. So, you know, for me to be in a classroom with 14 children from ages, you know, 5 to 14. But my sister had seven children. So I, I was, you know, basically around them all the time. And I saw how she handled a room full of kids that were from, you know, small ones to teenagers. So it was actually real easy. Plus, these are professional actors, these children. They're not just any children. The, you know, they work well. They show up on time. They know their lines. 
It was a real pleasure. And I loved Melissa Gilbert, Melissa Sue Anderson, and Allison Arngram. You know, we're still friends today. It's great. I'm lucky. Allison Arngram is a real hoot, isn't she? She's got <laughs> such a dry wit. When she's been on our show like three times, we always have such a great time. And she does the whole thing, you know, when she she does her uh, streaming. And it's it's a real hoot, right? I know. She's so talented. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I, I first saw her doing all this, I, I was surprised because I really didn't know that side of her. We I'd been off the show for quite a long time and, you know, so had she. But if you've ever seen her on stage, her comedy is to die for. And she's been traveling all over the world doing that. And I didn't really realize it because I haven't been around that much. Yeah. But, oh, she's a hoot. I still can't believe her mother, the iconic voice uh, actress, uh, was the voice of Gumby and Davy and Goliath and so many of these <laughs> Casper, the friendly ghosts and all yeah, these she characters. Grew up in show business. She grew up doing this. <laughs> Which is quite amazing as well. That's Allison. How about you? What was the entree into show business for you? What was the allure and the introduction and the inspiration for you, Charlotte? Well, I'll have to be honest, I couldn't get into college because I was a terrible student. I barely got out of high school and I was in a panic because at 17, all my friends were going away to college and, you know, University of California and Berkeley and Stanford, and I couldn't go. I saw an advertisement on the back of Teen Magazine. It was with Earl Holloman, and he talked about the Pasadena Playhouse, which was the State Theater of California. So I sent away for an application. I got accepted. And then I told my mother. <laughs> and she was so relieved that I had an idea that she, she and I drove to Pasadena. She was very impressed. And I started going to school there at 17. And I got my first job at 19 on the Loretta Young Show. Isn't that amazing? Yes, you did. And what was that like? I know that, um, you know, the set was fantastic. But she, she ran a tight ship, didn't she? Oh, she did. Yes, she did. And she, she, I only did one episode with her, but she hired me back for two more episodes playing different characters. Uh, one with Audrey Totter, Academy Award winning actress. And I just had the best time. And I went right from that into My Three Sons, Bachelor Father, you know, every episodic television show you can think of, I did. You know, and the first series I got basically was Little House on the Prairie. That's which right. was now 50 years ago. Of course, I'm yeah, not no. that old. You know. Of course not. Absolutely not. You know, you mentioned My Three Sons and, of course, the incredible cast. And uh, we've had the opportunity to have uh, Barry Livingston and Stanley, of course, on the show several times. Yeah. And they're both great guys. But um, when you were on, you uh, your eyes sort of caught the incomparable Tim Constantine, mm -hmm. right? I and uh, he sort of worked maybe a way to, to win his heart over and you succeeded. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't mean so. I wasn't trying, but he hit it off rather well. And we were together for, you know, quite a long time. Excuse me, I just had the yeah. hiccups. Get all choked um, up, see? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Tim and I were together for a long time. And um, when we divorced, we stayed friends. We used to play on the same soccer team together. Uh, you know, so we had a lot of mutual friends. And dear Timmy just passed away this last year. Um, just a really bad accident. Uh, we fell in his home. And, uh, you know, God bless him. He was, a, he was a good father. He he went on to marry, you know, again and have, have a son. And uh, I just, we stayed friends after Which, a while, you know. Yeah. Which is a beautiful thing, you know, it really is a, a beautiful thing. And he was a terrific actor. And wasn't there a story where he was on My Three Sons and then you guys went away for a bit and oh. he, he, yes, the manager wanted him to direct some episodes. They said no. And then they sort of wrote him off the show yeah, we were, to the we great shock married. of all of you. We got married and we went to uh, Europe on our honeymoon. And while we were gone, now we didn't have cell phones in those days. There was no, you know, easy communication. And uh, his manager went to the producers and said, he wants to direct half the shows or he won't do the show. And they went, no, <laughs> he can't. And he was fired. He didn't even know it. Till we got back, he had no job. 
it was just stunned. We, we were stunned. That had to really be a great loss for him. And I'm sure it affected him emotionally, huh? On many oh, levels. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we had a hard time after that because he didn't work for a long time. And I have to say, I, I kind of lost my patience and decided to go off on my own career, which I did. And um, anyway, we stayed friends. Which is absolutely beautiful. Two very beautiful people to, to do that. You know, also you uh, brushed elbows with uh, Elvis and with Speedway. And um, what was it like working with Elvis? And I know, you know, the movies that Elvis did, everybody loves them. And they're, they're almost like a cult following. But he was really an entertainer's entertainer, right? He liked being on stage and singing and entertaining live and making the music and the, uh, the films were sort of just like part of the package, I guess, thrust on a little bit. Right. Did he yeah, express he did, that to you? He did, he did. Yes, he did. He shared some of that with me. I was only on the set for two days, but he pulled a chair up next to him and took my hand and told me about what it was like when he was in the army and they wouldn't let him come home and see his mother who was yeah. ill and he just, you know, he was having a really hard time. And all I could think of was, holy crap, Elvis is holding my hand. He's holding your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I had that feeling once when Florence Henderson sat on my lap. Oh, no. <laughs> it was the same kind of, so I, I know what your what that was. <laughs> You're yeah, like, you wait know, a minute, what's happening yeah. here? Am I on a the, twilight zone? <laughs> the weirdness was uh, Tim and I had just gotten married and Elvis and, and Priscilla had just gotten married. And in my stupid brain, I'm thinking, oh, I'll invite them over for supper. You know, we're both newlyweds. And then I thought, what are you thinking? Elvis coming to, no, I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. Guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> Right. That is right. that is funny. Wow. Yeah, is. Oh, my God. Well, you know, speaking of that, uh, you had an opportunity to be in this film. I know uh, it's a, it was an interesting part because it involved a telephone line, but it was quite a movie. Which, speaking of guests, coming to Sidney Poitier and Bancroft, and, and the Bancroft. Slender Thread, Telly and Savala, I, Stephen Hill. Yeah. yeah. And I was the slender thread. You were the I was the thread. telephone operator between the two of them, Anne Bancroft and, um, and, and Sidney Portier, and she was committing suicide. And he was, was going to save her. And I had no idea because I had one day working at the, uh, the Los Angeles telephone company on the switchboard. And that's all I did. So I never saw any of the other movie until the movie came out. <laughs> and I realized oh, I was the slender thread. <laughs> you were the person that said, can you hear me now before the person <laughs> yeah. that says it now? <laughs> That's, or little Lily Tomlin, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, you were before all of that, which is, that is amazing. You were also um, had a part in, in this Doctor, you've got to be kidding. Sandra. Doctor, you've got to be kidding. George Hamilton, Sandra D. What was that like? Well, it was very brief. Um, I played the secretary of the producer in the movie, and I never got to meet either one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes that happens with the shooting schedules, right? Yeah, exactly. They, they exactly. shoot that day. But yeah. uh but a great memory, uh, of course, another with some more iconic figures, yeah. Henry Fonda, Jimmy Stewart, Shirley Jones, the Cheyenne oh. Social Club. There my, is something My special. mom and dad, my mom and dad just couldn't believe that I was doing a scene with, with Henry Fonda and Jimmy Stewart. I mean, uh, that they were the big stars when my parents were, you and know, were, you know, growing up and all that yeah. so but i had such a good time i love jimmy stewart he was so oh, sweet yeah right and then you look back you've had an opportunity to work with so many extraordinary people as you are extraordinary yourself oh, just to on. be just to be around you know all these incredible people along the way i was lucky i was lucky do you feel you feel like you were lucky yeah yeah 
Yep, I was very lucky. Right place, right time. <laughs> Which means a lot, but of course you're you're very humble about it. But your incredible talent also. Uh, accompanied all of that, uh, which is so important. There's another great shot with Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> One he of the nicest so guys they've always said, right? Uh, just, he, just... Used to, he had his uh, trailer on the set. It was a small, very, you know, portable little, little dressing room. And he used to sit on the steps of his trailer and he played the accordion and you could hear it all over the soundstage. He would, you know, between there's a lot of downtime. So he would sit there and he's playing the accordion. It was just so pleasant. And he was so pleasant. I really liked him. I don't know about Henry Fonda. He was kind of, you know. Remote. Always, yeah. Aloof. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's what I'd always heard as well. Uh, and of course, another beloved series that people are still relishing and that has had some sort of a resurgence. And, and we've had the great... Uh, Michael Lernard on uh, not that long ago. She's coming back on. And then Cammy Cutler mm -hmm. and Judy Norton. The is Waltons. The Waltons. And you had, uh, th it was a very poignant um, it was, it was the first line. episode. Very first episode. Yes. And I played the mother of a deaf girl. But we didn't know what was wrong with her. We were uneducated. We were, you know, just, you know, kind of remote about what, what was wrong with her. So we tried to leave her on the doorstep of the Waltons. So maybe they would adopt her because we saw they were a very happy family. And, uh, you know, it, it was a long story, but they, they didn't shoot it first, but they ran it for their opening uh, episode of the series. So, uh, you know, I can't say that was me, but it was a sweet story. And I enjoy, I just saw Michael Lerner again. Sometimes we're on the same, uh, you know, uh, shows, the same panels. Yeah, and, uh, I just like her so much. She's a class act too, uh, as are you. Absolutely. Uh, another great one too. That uh, and and I wish that they would sort of bring it back. Is uh, you were Betty Briggs on Twin Peaks, which yeah. was a really great, great show and series. Now uh, that what you're showing is the remake. I that's the remake. The original. Yeah, the right. Original. Yeah. So the fact that they like did the remake was cool too. Isn't it? Well, David yes. Lynch, I, I did his first movie, you know, when, when he was a student at the American Film Institute, I did Eraserhead. And my mm. roommate was a volunteer at the, at the American Film Institute. And she came home one day and said, we have a student filmmaker and he's making a movie and he needs an actress. And I, and he said, I told her you were an actress. So he came for dinner and <laughs> he gave me the part. I thought it was going to take me about, you know, a couple of weeks it took three years to shoot Eraserhead. <laughs> and by that time, I was already doing the Waltons. Yes. <laughs> and starting Little House on the Prairie. So it was Isn't, weird. Yeah, all those happening for you all at the same time. Uh, yeah. What was it like on Twin Peaks for you? Oh, oh God, I loved it. I mean, yeah. I, I, I just, I loved the character. They let me kind of be my character. I love the actors. Um, I love David Lynch. I just adore him. He's so wild. He's so, I'm, he's not crazy. He kind of maybe think he is the way he, you know, acts about, you know, talks about things. He's so brilliant. And uh, I was just, I was so flattered that, you know, he would hire me again and again and again, you know, after Eraserhead. Because uh, literally we spent three years on Eraserhead. Uh, that's <laughs> the yeah, and there's a huge cult following for that as well. A lot of the things that you've been a part of have a tremendous fan base and cult followings, which I think is really kind of cool how that works out. <laughs> Maybe it's me. I don't know. <laughs> Who's that weird actress? She's in this too? <laughs> That's right. You're, during downtime on set, she's sewing. <laughs> yeah. That's it, right? That is funny. Do you do you also crochet and, and nope. knit and other things? The I don't know how to knit. I don't know how to crochet. I admire people who can do it. I love it. No, yeah. what I, I, you know how I started sewing? I was raised on a farm up in Yuba City, California, a little tiny farm town. And I was a competitive roller skater. You know, the spins and the jumps and all that when I was in grammar school. And in my little hometown, there were no skating outfits. You couldn't go buy a little skating skirt. So my sister taught me to sew. 
and I made my own little costumes and I've been sewing ever since. In fact, I had a clothing store in Hollywood on La Cienega Boulevard called the Liquid Butterfly. What a <laughs> you can great tell I was name. a hippie, right? <laughs> yeah, what a great name. <laughs> wow. How'd you come up with that name? It was my partner. She started it and she called it the Liquid Butterfly. And then she, you know, we joined together and then she left town and I kept the Liquid Butterfly. Wow. You know, going back to the Waltons, which again, an iconic series, was there one night where Ralph Waits and you sort of left the set and went off to uh, what? grab a coffee? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I've told the cast, too. I, you know, I see the Walton's cast quite a bit because we're on the same shows. And I told the girls and I said, you know, remember that first day when I was on the Walton? They said, yeah. And I said, you know, Ralph went home with me that night. And they went, what? What? <laughs> I bet they oh, yeah. did. I bet they did, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> You also worked with uh, Kevin Bacon. Of course, you're talking about Tremors. Well, he didn't go home with me. <laughs> <laughs> Kira Sidgwick did. <laughs> yeah, she would have beaten me up good. Yeah. Uh, this, what a great photo of the two of you, too. Oh, we um, had so much fun. We had uh, such a good show. Such good actors, you know. And we were, we were out in the desert for six weeks shooting that. You know, was it was it six weeks in the hot desert? Yeah, wow. six weeks in the high desert. It was hot. And it was dusty and it was sandy, but we made a really good scary movie. You it did. was good. Yeah. Do you ever hear from Kevin Bacon at all? The all these years later, I I ran into him once when somewhere you know, and he kind of looked at me across the room and I said, you know, hi. No, I don't run into anybody. I live in Napa. You know, nobody yeah. comes here. It's such a beautiful area. I don't know why, but yeah, uh, know. it's kind of nice. It's tucked away there for you. Somebody else, too, uh, who people are absolutely in love with and still have been. And you, again, rubbing elbows with all these fabulous people. Joni Mitchell. Uh, huh? Yeah, Joni. Joni and I were friends. When she first came to town uh, from Canada, she didn't drive. And we were both living in Laurel Canyon. And um, her her business her manager Elliot Roberts asked me if I could be you know be her friend and get her around. So we used to go you know all kinds of places together. She'd sing at the Troubadour, mm. and you know I, I just got to know her pretty well. That's at my house in Topanga. That was just uh, as I was getting the part of uh, on Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. She used to come visit me and you know take walks in Laurel in um, Topanga Canyon. You know, that's a beautiful place. Uh, I was just about to say, that's another place I fell in love with. When I was on a TV shoot, I had the rental car. We had some downtime and I just took the rental car and weaved all through Topanga, yeah. Topanga Canyon Road. And, and up to that, there's there's this uh, sightseeing overlook at the top of the, was it Topanga mm -hmm. Canyon, like mountain or something. And, you, and there's all of these yellow flowers blooming, a field, and it overlooks um, you know, you just, you could see the, the houses and everything, but it just is such a beautiful, peaceful. It's beautiful. You can see the whole San Fernando Valley. Right, the there. valley. It's quite, and then on the other end of Topanga is the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. So you go from the ocean to this beautiful valley. That's right. And I lived up there for quite a long time. And when I got the part on Little House on the Prairie, I had to move because it was just too far for me to travel, you know, every day to go to work. So yeah. I, I gave it up, moved to Hollywood. Moved to Hollywood. I, I think I remember taking the rental car and leaving the top of that beautiful mountain and then following the road. It might have been Topanga Kenya Road and it winds around. You go through a tunnel or two and you end up almost mm -hmm. near Malibu, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You end up. Yeah, exactly. Right at Malibu. It ends up right at Topanga Canyon, right at Pacific Coast Highway. Pacific. Right there. It really is beautiful. I drove up there recently. I just was kind of nostalgic. And um, I just, you know, was had a day off. I was in L.A. for a little bit. And I drove up there. And I, I drove past my old house on Observation Drive. I just, that's where uh, David Lynch came when he hired me to do Eraserhead. He came up there and brought me the script. I love the name of that. Observation Drive. Observation Drive, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it sounds like a series would be filmed there, doesn't it? That's it all starts on Observation idea. Drive. You I produce don't. it. And we'll get it going. <laughs> that, is, that is terrific. I, I'm so glad you're so happy. You know, you're, like I said, you're in a sweet spot. And uh, we, we dug out this fabulous shot of you and Michael Landon. Look at that. Yeah, that was uh, right after um, the series. Yeah. He, he went on to do another series and he hired me for one of the episodes. It was, you know, and that's the only time we worked together after that. After that um, part, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, and when you, um, Miss Beetle obviously wasn't on the entire series, a good part of it, but then it came to the, a period where they decided uh, that her character would sort of wrap up on the series. What was well, it, that it was like? Well, it's a true story. Um, Almanzo had to come to um, the little town to meet Laura Ingalls so she could become Laura Ingalls, you know, Wilder. And so they had to write me out so that his sister could become the teacher, Liza May. So I had, to, they told me when I got the part, it would be only for four years. I said, oh, only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. When Residuals. You actor, yeah. yeah. When you tell an actor they've got four years of four work, years that's pretty of... incredible. And, right? and residuals after that help pay some bills, which is very, very yeah, nice. Yeah, I still get them. They're about a dollar and a quarter now. What do you do with the dollar and quarter? Do you have it in a jar? Or... <laughs> do you buy sewing equipment with it? <laughs> I buy sewing equipment. Yeah, yeah, fabric. That, that's fabrics with it. <laughs> so the next time you watch the series, know that when you see Miss Beetle on, that the hard work she's doing on set on those scenes, it's going in a jar for sewing equipment now that's, in that's uh, right. this year, 50 years <laughs> later. <laughs> Then you decided, you know, I have lots to tell because you you have such an, ex you've lived yeah. such a passionate, extraordinary life. And you penned this very, very well-received memoir, Little House in the Hollywood Hills. What inspired you to write this and uh, tease us a little bit about it? It's incredible. Well, I had no intention of ever writing a book. I told you, I was a terrible student in school. I'd never written anything. But I met this newspaper man here in Napa, and we used to meet for coffee. And he said, you know, you should, I, he said, you should write a book. And I went, oh, really? He said, no, seriously, you've got a lot. Because, you know, I tell stories all the time. You've, that you've just said to me, I tell good stories. Yeah. He said, don't write a book, tell stories. I thought, hmm, I certainly do enough of that. So I sat down and I started telling stories. I'd write one story at a time. I'd give it to him. He'd give it back with maybe some corrections or some suggestions. And I'd go write another story. And it took two years and a lot of nerve. But I presented it to a publisher. And there it is, right there. Little House in the Hollywood Hills, A Bad Girl's Guide. <laughs> To becoming Miss Beetle, Mary X and me, yeah, <laughs> which is it's a it's really a no holds barred, heartbreaking but ultimately joyful account of fifty years in film and television, offering a backstage pass to something really interesting, a cocaine fueled glory years in the seventies, really? including the celebrated work of David Lynch, and uh, of course Twin Peaks and and all the rest. And you know, I ha I did a lot of wonderful. Um, shows and I met a lot of wonderful people but there's no point in writing something if you don't tell all the sides to the story and I got in some pretty deep trouble you know with drugs and alcohol you know I made a lot of mistakes and I didn't see the point of writing a book when it was only about oh guess who I met and guess who I blah 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 no I told about my alcoholism and you know my mistakes and being in treatment, and um, and it came out pretty good. People like it because I told the truth. Because you told the truth, which is very, very refreshing. You talk about, you know, uh, working with Jimmy Stewart and Elvis, Kevin Bacon, Kyle McLaughlin, and friendships with Neil Young. And we talked about Joni Mitchell earlier. And, of course, relationships <laughs> and quote flings with some of TV, film, and music's biggest names, including John Voight and Richard Dreyfus, Victor French, Bill Murray, Jim Morrison. That's an incredible repertoire. Well, I had very good taste. 
<laughs> as did they. <laughs> It works both ways, Charlotte. <laughs> it really does. But you know what it is? It's also a story of being a survivor in so many different ways. It's a very uh, appealing and inspiring and empowering story, even though it has those nuggets and those Hollywood stories and things that people are uh, drawn to. It's also a story of survival and of passion and caring and enthusiasm for life and getting through the ups and downs of life and dealing with Hollywood and all of this. And I think that is something very impactful and long lasting as a result of this extraordinary open and real heartfelt memoir Thank that you've you. penned. I didn't see the point of just telling stories. Oh, I did this and I did that. No, I want to tell the truth. I made a lot of mistakes. I learned a lot of lessons. I, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm 83 years old now. I'm very no happy. No way. <laughs> yeah, way. 83. Oh yeah, well, figure out. You know, 50 years ago, I was on Little True. House on the Prairie, and True. I wasn't a child. True. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, it's, uh, well, like I said, you are in a sweet spot, and, and people absolutely adore you, and I know that you... You were very grateful for that. That's one of the things that I think is is extra special about Charlotte Stewart is that you know the investment people make in following a career of somebody that they admire, whether it's somebody that's on television or music, film, or anything in life. And you're somebody that many, many people admire and have followed and they celebrate and love to hear your stories. And now that you're touring the country and going to all these cities, which I think is a beautiful thing that you're participating in it. Because sometimes, you know, when people are on shows and in movies and plays, when it's over, they're done and they don't relive it. They don't want to go back to it. But you you're know, part of the cast celebrating I thought, it. I thought I was done. I really did. I had no idea this was all going to come about. Even when I wrote the book, I thought, gosh, you know, who's going to buy this book? Holy moly. <laughs> Was I surprised. <laughs> Did it give you any sort of inkling about writing more books, not necessarily a memoir, but just more books? Did you enjoy the writing experience, Charlotte? I did. Yeah. I did. Because it was in my own voice. I, yes. was telling, I was telling stories in my own voice. It wasn't she did this and she did that. It was I made the biggest mistake I've ever made. I, you know what I did? I did blah, blah, blah. Um, was that hard in the beginning? Did you, in the beginning, did you put pen to paper and then stop, say, oh, maybe I shouldn't share that? Or how can I share that? W was there any hesitancy in the beginning? Yeah. yeah. There was. I had a wonderful, um, I will call him a producer. He's a newspaper man here in Napa. He's the one that encouraged me. And we met every two weeks at Starbucks and I would bring him what I wrote and he would take it and two weeks later he'd come back and he would either give me changes or suggestions. And he pretty much just said, this is your voice. These are the things you've told me before about, you know, what you did here and what you did there and the mistakes you made and the joy you had. He said, this is what you're writing. And I think you got, I think you got a good book here. And they did. They. I'm thinking of a way that maybe I could write again about what I've learned in my life. Mm. Um, you know, because I've told all my mistakes. I've told all my adventures. I've told all my work. And maybe if I write again, it'll be what I think now. At 83 years old, looking back at all the luck I've had and all the joy I've had, you know, maybe sharing some of that. But I'm not real confident yet, you know. When you look back at it all, and it is a blessing uh, and you're very grateful i know and very thankful for it and what would be one thing that does come to mind now in that vein that does sort of stick with you as far as just looking back and and realizing the journey you've been on and continue to be on well it what i realize is how grateful i am for the family that i had for the parents that I had, for the siblings that I had, who I could look up to and, you know, admire. I learned so much from them. Uh, they're all gone. It's just me now. And um, eight years ago, I met a friend, an old friend, and we've been married 
now for, you know, eight years. And we go on adventures together. Michael travels sometimes with me. And, you know, some, sometimes I go by myself. But I have a whole new life now. And I'm not in showbiz anymore. I don't do any acting anymore. But I... I am still creative, and that really makes me happy. I raised money for a, a local project here in Napa. I'm a cancer survivor, uh, breast cancer. So I raised money for the local breast cancer um, program here, try to introduce people to it. And I do that through my books. That is so beautiful. I mean, you're, you're, you're such a kind-hearted person giving back in the way that you do. I, I don't know if everybody across the country, around the world watching – knew that you did that. That's such a kind thing to take time and to, to give back. Um, and, you know, and to still be, you know, visible and approachable. Some people, it, like you say, you've done it all these years and you could easily just have your shades pulled down and like, I'm good, I'm done. That's it. But just yeah. to st still be out and connected and, and creating uh, in the way that you do, I think is something quite, Thanks. quite special. I I have no desire to act anymore. Um, that that part of my life is is over. Although I do enjoy doing interviews. I mean, you come up with some wonderful questions, and I, en I enjoy going. Oh my gosh, I forgot! I forgot. <laughs> That's fun, you know. So thank you for that. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Did singing and dancing ever come into your? Uh... Oh, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we were hoping I to did. hear. One, one time here in Topanga, I went down to the, the local dance hall and, you know, I was kind of moving around like this and this drunk staggered over to me and he goes, you call that dancing? I went, okay. That's <laughs> I'm it. I'm never going to try it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh... <laughs> so, so if somebody approached you and said, you know, Charlotte, we have this project, this movie, this documentary, or this sitcom or anything. Would you entertain it? No. Um, and I'll tell you why. And this is being honest. I can't remember my lines. And the last time that happened was the last job I had. And it was embarrassing. And I was humiliated. It wasn't a huge part. I was playing a bartender in a you know little movie. But I had the hardest time. And I I wrote to my, I called my agent when I got home and I said, I'm done. You know, I can't do this to a director or my coworkers. I can't be in a scene and not remember my lines. So that's just something that's going on in my physical being, you know? So that was over 15 years ago. I have not regretted it. And I'm, I stay busy all the time. We, uh, we had John Davidson, of course, game show host, talk show host, singer, actor on last night. And he was broadcasting live from his boat in Mexico. Ooh. And uh, he had this venue up in New Hampshire. And this is the final year of it, an entertainment venue called Club Sandwich in Sandwich, New Hampshire. And all these talents would come and do shows and really cool thing. But he decided this year to pretty much retire from the industry completely retire from all the singing he's still doing and everything mm -hmm. else after all the years, TV, Vegas and everything. And he, and I asked him something similar. I said, you know, what was it about now? And he's also 83. And he's, I said, what is it about now that inspired you to want to say, you know, I've done it all and I'm, and I'm good. I'm content. And he was saying the same thing. He said, well, Jim, you know, I, when I'm playing the songs and singing them, some of the words get mumbo jumboed or I'm forgetting mm -hmm. the words. And he said, and I'm, I don't really want that to happen. I don't want to, when I'm out on stage to have that kind of thing going on. So I think the time now to pull away from that aspect of my life is, is just about right. And you know, what's happened is with little house on the prairie in 50 years and even, even 15 years ago, when I started doing these shows so much, when I, on the road, it's I'm not acting. I'm I'm Charlotte meeting fans, and I love doing that. I love it, and I, I will I, I will continue to make my my beetle bags. I sew every day, and I'll do that as long as as I can hold a needle in a sewing machine. But as far as acting and remembering lines and following direction, that part's over. I just can't do it anymore. 
but I love being with my with the fans and I travel uh, and you know whatever whatever they want me to do I'll do but not acting so what it is is Charlotte Stewart is now playing her favorite role she's playing Charlotte she's playing <laughs> you right that's what it is of all these iconic characters yeah. and roles and just so many incredible things on television and film you are playing your favorite role you and and that's a beautiful thing isn't it yes yes and i get to meet so many people and they get to tell me about their experience with my career and i go oh really i did i did that i don't remember plus also the impact that you've made too when they when they open up to you about how much they've enjoyed you in these various roles and what it's meant uh, to them, that that must be very heartwarming for you. It is. It is. I'm I'm very proud. I'm very proud of what I've done, um, but that doesn't mean it has to go on forever. You know. Right. Exactly. But my right. life is going on just fine. I've never traveled so much. You know, I've been to Europe. I've been, you know, all over the United States. I and I just love it. I told you about the 50th anniversary of our yeah. show. Yeah. When we started Little House on the Prairie. They went, Hollywood, I'm talking, Hollywood went, ah, little house on the prairie, hmm, we'll see. Well, where are they today? <laughs> Selling insurance or something, you know. <laughs> Used cars, whatever it may be. <laughs> They're not in Napa in the sewing room making beetle bags. <laughs> You are absolutely a delight, and uh, this is your return visit. We're always going to keep the porch light on for you. Okay. You are a fabulous person. You are open and real and authentic, caring, funny, super talented, wow. and I absolutely was looking forward to this, and you're one of my favorites. And so Thank when you. we were able to Thank put this you. together, especially during this really special time with Little House in the Prairie's 50th anniversary. And I encourage folks, if you see that she's coming to a city near you, she and the gang from Little House, make sure you get your tickets and go out and say hello, because they're saying hello. They're, you know, mingling with the super fans. I think it's a beautiful thing. And you thing. can buy a beetle bag. And you can get the beetle bags as well. Um, <laughs> what would uh, Charlotte of today say to the younger version of Charlotte, like that little girl on the left there. What would you say to her? Oh, you're a beautiful little girl and don't ever doubt yourself. I love that. That's very important advice. That really, really is. Charlotte, uh, this really was fantastic. And I know you're very, very busy. I don't want to take too much of the time, but come back and see us again. And I truly hope that you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you. I always, Jim, I always do. You ask me such interesting questions and you, you get me to relive the past. And, you know, I love that. Thank you. You are very welcome. And I probably will see you guys when you are in Connecticut because we're yes. here in the Northeast. So you'll be there in the yes. summertime and I'll come up and say hello. And I look, she got, she's got the calendar. <laughs> I love it. When am I going to be in Connecticut? I think it's late August, September. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that she has uh, the physical yes. calendar. It's August 28th through the 31st in Watertown, Connecticut. That's right. That's the Northeast corner. Beautiful yeah. area sort of leading up towards the uh, <laughs> Litchfield Hills and the Berkshires. It's a gorgeous area. And uh, at summertime in New England, that's going to be I've beautiful. I've never been there. I've never <sighs> been there. I can't wait. It's a beautiful time to be in the Northeast. And uh, everybody's going to warmly welcome you and everybody. You're a, a sweet Harvard person, Charlotte, and I really appreciate all the time. Uh, safe travels. And congratulations on everything. And thank you. Come see us again on the Gym Master Show. The door's always open for you. Okay, Jim, anytime, anytime. You be well, okay? Get, I will. She's going to get back to sewing now. She has orders to fill. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Take care, my friend. Okay. Bye bye. The incomparable Charlotte Stewart, once again, gracing us with her wit and wisdom, her amazing stories, and, uh, her grace and her beauty and her talent. 
here on the Jim Master Show. Was that not fun or what to have her here with us as we celebrate her? You know, we were talking about the 50th uh, Little House in the Prairie, which is very hard to believe, but also celebrating this uh, American television and film iconic figure. And uh, you know, it's wonderful. So many of the guests that come on our show are so humble about their experiences and as we celebrate them here on our show. But uh, Charlotte has touched our lives in so many different ways through everything that she's done and some iconic series and shows. And she takes on the roles with such vim and vigor. And a lot of these shows, which truly is amazing. There's the Loretta, Long, or Loretta Young, one of her very first appearances. Um, these shows and these movies have these cult followings, which is absolutely amazing. And I know a lot of you, uh, now you're going to go out once again and probably rent some of the movies and take a look at some of the episodes again, especially uh, Little House in the Prairie and the Waltons and so much more, uh, Twin Peaks, all the rest. She really is terrific. What I love too, if you have not picked up her memoir, you really should. It's real. It's open, it's authentic, and uh, she, you know, holds uh, no holds bar, pulls no punches. And I think it's really inspiring for other people, too, who think that, you know, just being on television and film and stage is just easy breezy and it's all glamour and everything comes easy to you. And it couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, temptations and a lot of different things, blood, sweat, and tears to put all those kinds of things together. And, um, and she has uh, survived it all and shares it. I think that's such a great thing. You guys, I know, have been commenting in our lovely Hall chat room throughout the show. And I really, really appreciate that. Uh, Jen Barry's in Pennsylvania says, Charlotte, you are a lovety, a gym master show lovety. She really, really is. She's a very sweetheart of a person. And it was absolutely great to have her here on the show. Maureen in Arizona says, welcome back to Lovety Hall, Charlotte. So nice to see you again. Absolutely. And again, if you see that she's coming to a city near you with the gang from Little House in the Prairie, get those tickets because some of the venues are selling out. Uh, there's waiting lists and standby lists because this is something very, very special. Uh, Pam in Maryland says, uh, hello, Miss Stewart. Um, we really love that. And Kathleen in New York City is saying hello as well to Charlotte and to me and to everybody here. This is really nice. Thank you for all these beautiful comments here. And uh, this is really terrific. And Jane says that Little House in the Prairie is airing in Sweden. Uh, Jane is in Sweden and you're so glad that it's back and it's worth watching again. That is fantastic. And the Celestial Harpist. Hi, Charlotte. I can't wait to meet you in September. So you're going to be meeting her in uh, September. See me in September. That's really cool. That's I'm sure we'll be looking forward to seeing you and, and everybody. Kathleen says, thank you for coming back here, Charlotte. You are one such sweet lady. Take care. This was a great conversation. Absolutely was. Kathleen in New York City. Jen Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Charlotte, thank you for spending time with us. Come back soon. Love you. Maureen says, this was a lovely conversation with you, Charlotte. You are amazing. Keep on sewing and living your best life. Lovely hugs to you, dear lady. Merlin watching in Ontario, Canada says, thanks, Charlotte. Lovely. That's really nice. I love that. Uh, thank you, Charlotte, for being here tonight. Uh, this was a lovely show. Thanks, Jim. It is my pleasure and Charlotte's pleasure as well. And uh, you're going to be going in uh, to the Connecticut show. So maybe we'll see you there as well. I really appreciate that. Maryland, Pam Stubbs says, thank you, Charlotte and Jim, for a wonderful episode. The naysayers are probably in nursing homes or dead. <laughs> you mean the ones that said Little House in the Prairie? <laughs> the ones that said Little House in the Prairie would never work? They're probably in nursing homes or dead. <laughs> well, maybe. They're definitely not sewing beetle bags, that's for sure, right? Uh, and you love the bag that she's sewing. Well, go on Amazon and you can you know, order a, up a bag, a special custom bag. That's what she does. She's very crafty uh, as well and a sweetheart of a person. So our very special guest, Charlotte Stewart, gracing us with her presence here on the Jim Masters Show live series. If you'd like to see this episode again, it is archived right here on our YouTube channel. That is Jim Masters TV. 
And uh, we encourage you as well, which is really something special. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up like on our YouTube channel. That's Gym Masters TV. Share this episode. Leave a comment and interact with us. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, where you can see episodes. There's almost 1,200 episodes of our series that we've done in the last four years, which I think is absolute 1,200 episodes. That's a lot of shows, and we really love putting it on for all of you. Once again, we thank the incomparable Charlotte Stewart for joining us. We thank you for joining us as well. Come back and see us again. The porch light is always on for you right here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. We love you all. Don't forget, take care of one another, be good to one another, and take care of yourself and love yourself. For all of us here, be well. Come see us again on the Gym Master Show Live. Cheers. Mm -hmm.